Hi there everyone. Now at the time of filming, the Hubble Space Telescope, surely the most famous telescope above the world, is about to celebrate its 25th anniversary and it's getting all this publicity and everyone's talking about it and Keith has gotten a little bit jealous and, and he says he has a telescope that's even more amazing than Hubble and he says it's in that blue box. Hubble is great but this is uh, the history of the Hubble. This is the very first surviving reflecting telescope. Whenever I think of telescopes, I think of Galileo. Indeed. Well, he, Gal he, didn't, he didn't have a reflecting telescope. Or? Well, Gal Galileo made telescopes, of course, but it was Isaac Newton that produced the first Newtonian reflecting telescope using mirrors instead of lenses. So Galileo came along and Isaac Newton basically said, nice try, buddy, check this out. Indeed. So the, the lenses uh, produced colour effects that weren't good. They couldn't grind them particularly well. The solution came out of Newton's optical work. So he knew about prisms, he knew about colour aberration. So he decided he would make a better telescope. And here we have it. Keith, open the box. I'd be, well, right. let's, do, let's do that. <laughs> this is the real deal. This, this is the real deal. So this is, this is the thing itself. So, here we have the world's first reflecting telescope, the first surviving one, I should say. And here, the bit that's the most important, this is this, the speculum, the mirror, which sits at the back of the instrument there, and that's what uh, gathers and concentrates the light. James, do you getting this? Newton's original mirror in my hand. So here's what happens. The starlight, which is a bit further away than my hand in actuality, comes into the hole here at the front, goes down the tube and hits the mirror. This is the primary mirror, which is sitting in the back of the telescope here. The light then reflects back up the tube to a small little mirror that we'll be able to show you that sits here on an angle, which makes the light bounce up through the eyepiece, which you can then see like so. What's going on though? Like, is this the first one he made? Did, did Isaac Newton craft this? How did it come to be here? I mean, this is not a simple story. It's a very complex story, and uh, we know it's not the first telescope that Newton made. He made a very basic one in about 1668. Uh, he then made two more in 1671 to 72. Newton kept an instrument himself, and we know he had it until quite late in life. Uh, so it's possible that this is the third instrument which he uh, seems to have bequeathed possibly to Edmund Halley. What then happens in the mid-18th century is that it pops up in a London instrument maker's shop. An instrument maker on the Strand called Heath and Wing, and this is uh, shown as, as Newton's original telescope. But then it was purchased and in 1766 it was given back to the Royal Society, if indeed it's the second or possibly the third instrument you'll see that the eyepiece is no longer in its original position. There's a little piece of cork there which is, is covering an original hole where uh, the, the focal length was uh, to begin with. So that's now, the original eyepiece yeah. and that's where it is now. But this is possibly part of the um, instrument maker's amendments or um, repairs to a very famous telescope. This wooden ball here at the bottom, this is basically just how you turn it to... Exactly it. right. Well, I, I, I like this simple ball and socket joint because it, it reminds me a bit of the Hubble Space Telescope. Uh, you have the, 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 the tube here floating above the globe. It, it's, it's nicely appropriate, I think. There's some engraving here at the bottom. I'm going to read this. The first reflecting telescope presented by Sir Isaac Newton and made with his own hands in the year... 1671. It's one of those things that doesn't get displayed outside of the Royal Society very often. I think it's only been outside once in the 20th century and uh, once in the 19th when the Royal Society allowed school children in Grantham to, to parade it through the village square, something we would definitely not do now. Um, but it, because it's such a, a rare thing, an important thing, and, and so associated with Newton, uh, people, people do get very, very excited by it. And, and to be fair, I do too.
Does it still work? Can we turn it? It, it does still work. We don't turn it these days, but um, we can maybe allow you just one turn of the handle brake. Are you sure? I don't, yes, I don't do. want to... Mainly, I don't want to break it. <laughs> you, you're not going to break it.